All right, well, our next presenter is Mark Camelli, Director of Channels with Six Score. He's a seasoned channel professional with 28 years of experience in computer software and high tech service organizations. Mark has been in Six for over 13 years and has expertise in securing email in order to meet strict regulations. When he's not at work, Mark enjoys spending time with his family at the game and writing his Harley through New England. Welcome, Mark Camelli. So, good morning everyone, thank you for coming out. Uh, not too nice of a day out here in Sioux Falls. My first time in Sioux Falls. And as I look across the room, I'm really, really impressed with the number of people here. Uh, I've done dozens of presentations all around the country, and this is the biggest group I've ever presented in front of. So I, I think it says a lot about the topic we have, but also the relationship you all have with Earth Pen. Uh, again, it's so important to have partners like Earth Pen out in the field uh, helping us with our technology, getting the word out to you guys. So I want to thank Earth Ben for inviting us to attend, and thank you all for coming out here. If you'll bear with me for one minute, I need to do an impersonation of my 15-year-old daughter. since then. Um, we reference in here the Verizon Data Breach Investigation Report and a couple different uh, slides. Is anybody familiar with that? Yeah, I guess it's been around since 2008. Um, they do it every year, and what they do is they look at uh, breaches across the, the globe, and literally thousands of them, and what they, they do from that, and you can find this out on the web, is try to distill some of the patterns that are happening, what's, what's going on out there with regards to the breaches, and then they supply that information to vendors like Zix, customers like you, and, and partners like Earthman. So um, certainly you might want to start thinking about that. You can get the uh, recent one off the web. And like I said, I do make some uh, reference to it here. Oh, before I do that, so she mentioned I was from New England. Does anybody want to get their deflate gauge over south now? <laughs> <laughs> If you want to see me later, we can certainly talk to the World Championships and get that a little bit further. But uh, uh, I'm an avid fan of the Boston teams, the New England teams, and uh, been in Boston since 85. I wasn't born there, that's why I do not have an accent. If you talk to my wife, you would certainly see that accent. But uh, so jumping in, this first slide again it references the report. Uh, User fleet footprints whenever they go on the network. And their activities uh, are or can be captured by myriad of cars. So some of the, uh, the points that they find in this report, you know, our guys, not me, but some smart guys and me, agree or disagree with these things because, oh really? It's the good guys, yeah, that you can track easily, but according to the report, uh, people who you know, tap into a network, stay, you know, hidden for an average 268 days. So you can imagine what somebody with malicious intent can do on a network if they've got, you know, almost a year to, to jump around on there. So some of the stuff we agree with, and, and but not everything is true. Does anybody recognize this gentleman? Any famous ex-hackers in the world? I mean, in the, in the room, this is Kevin Mitnick. He's uh, he is an ex-hacker, worldly famous. Does a lot of uh, work with uh, good good companies now trying to protect the world against hackers. I noticed there's something we're doing from the FBI is going to do a, a presentation later this morning, so they probably know who he is. Uh, but Kevin Mitnick joined us at RSA this past year, and he did this video, and you can download this video. What because what my presentation is about, there's a lot of products that protect your guys' networks on the inbound, right? You've got firewalls, you've got intrusion detection, you name it. You've got a lot of different choices, a lot of different vendors. We don't do that. What Six is, does 
is we're protecting the outbound flow of your information to make sure that doesn't get hacked. And what Kevin Mendick is doing here um, is he's tapping into a fiber optic cable, and he said he bought the stuff that to do it right from a radio shack. He was able to, within a minute, tap into this wire and start reading the SMTP traffic off of that wire, so email. Um, and any message that went out in clear text with, in a matter of minutes, he, he, he did a sniffer, he got it running, and you can see the SMTP traffic in clear text, just like anybody else might, might see it, the, the recipient. So you've got this wire, and the thing about fiber optic, now you can track copper, Wi-Fi, you know, intrusion that way, um, but Wi-Fi, yeah, I'm not the expert, I don't have an SE up here, but my understanding is unless you have some type of power discriminator going off of your knock, you'll never notice somebody tapping into a fiber optic wire. So if somebody breaks on that cable, they can sit there for as long as they want, and you guys would never know that. So again, if you think about what Six does, is we protect email, SMTP traffic, we encrypt it. And it's really important you guys be thinking about that. You know, protect your uh, network of people coming in, protect the stuff that you store on hard drives and laptops and on thumb drives, but also be thinking about your outbound security as well. This video is you can download it from our website. It's, it's pretty darn interesting how quickly he was able to do it. He'll explain what I just uh, briefed for real, real, much more in depth. So, Zix Corporation email encryption. Um, the young lady told, told you guys that I've been in the for 28 years. Zix has been around since 1988, a uh, year after I got into this business. I stumbled into this business, and that's a whole other story. If you guys want to hear it, stuff by the book. But anyhow, I've been doing it a long time. Zix has been doing it a long time, too. We've really focused on email security, email encryption only, into the last two years. We have BYOD and DLP, and I'll talk about that. Um, we went public in 1989. Our stock is ZIX Cyber Headquartered in Dallas, Texas. I'm based in just north of the Boston office. We've got offices in Ottawa, and we've got a number of offices throughout and remote places throughout the country. We have our closest route to Sioux Falls is based in Minneapolis. Uh, so email alerts is what we do. We have over 12,000 customers, uh, one in five hospitals, one in four financial institutions, all the financial regulators. So depending on what industry you're in, healthcare and finance, we're number one. And we're also seeing uh, a big surge in what we're calling others, insurance, titles, uh, legal, manufacturing, anybody who has sensitive information, we are seeing a, a tick up in, that, in that, that space. So even though you may not be driven by HIPAA to be HIPAA compliant, um, there are still things you need to protect, including healthcare information. Uh, the other thing I want to point out about Zix is We've been doing this for a long time. We've got what we call a Zix encryption network, and there's close to 50 million protected email addresses in that network. And what's key about that is that we talk about it's seamless uh, transfer of email throughout the, uh, throughout the network. So um, this, you can read this, this quote up here. Again, it's from the, uh, the report, but basically, in the thousands of different uh, breaches that they investigated, 90% of them involved people, right? And, and, and whose who's video was it? Sophos, you know, those that started the video. I mean, that's what it is. I don't think it's that malicious. Those people see it really good. You know, employees, you know, doctors are paid to be doctors. Loan officers are paid to be loan officers. Lawyers are to do law. They're not IT experts. You know, they're not uh, security experts. And they make mistakes simply because they're always too busy, they're not thinking, they're trying to get back to a customer real quick or a patient or another doctor. They just don't think through that. So I think it's real important that you all think about this when you're thinking about your overall security. And again, with Zix, it's the outbound security that we're, we're most famous for protecting. So it's up to you, the IT experts, to Take that burden, and again, I think the SoFo's video really spoke to it well, is that here are your issues, here are your problems, here are your employees. Your job is to protect them, right? To help them to do their jobs and to do it securely and not expose your, your companies. So 
with email encryption, you've got a couple ways of looking at it. This is the traditional way. Um, I've got to put the slide together. Uh, Neil Ferguson, who is uh, an Irish guy, a really nice guy, he refers to it as the spaghetti approach. Um, with traditional approach to email encryption with most of our competitors, there's no way that you can share information uh, amongst the members of the group. So you may have, I uh, won't mention any names because I made some friends last night, but you might have part, I mean, product X and one of your uh, customers or patients or other hospitals, let's say, has the same product. They cannot communicate transparently to each other. So you've got different passwords, secure attachments, you have to decrypt. So it becomes hard and cumbersome and hard for you guys to manage, but also really hard for your end users to do. So what do end users do when they get frustrated with the security? They find ways around it, or they simply don't do it. They don't secure an attachment. They just send it, and it's easy for them to do it. So again, they are relying, your companies are relying on the folks in this room to take that burden and, and do what's right to protect the organizations. With six, it's as easy as that, right? It's, uh, this is our community of trust network. As I mentioned, our, our, our Zix encryption network. This is where we have close to 50 million protected email addresses. That number goes up by at least 100,000 a week. So everybody understands the network. The value of the network expands when, when the number of people on the network expands. So this community of trust of ours is, is talking about how we communicate securely amongst all the members. And in many cases, I think we do about a million encrypted messages a day, 75% of those are, are delivered transparently. So again, it just speaks to, I think, where we are as a company, as a technology, and I think it helps you guys in, you know, put something in place to protect that outbound email flow without uh, having your end users pay the price. This is just an example. I, won't, I don't want to talk too much about our products, but I just want to point out this last slide about our email encryption product. This is all that they'll see in their inbound, in their email. It's, it comes into the network via a gateway, gets decrypted at the gateway, and goes in clear text to the recipient. All we see is this blue bar that basically says this message was sent securely using Zixor. So if, if you happen to be a, a loan officer and you open up an email and it's filled with you know, social security numbers, you have my credit card information, Set up my date of birth, et cetera, et cetera. And you see that in the, in the body of an email, you know, typically you freak out, but if you see that it was done securely, um, you'll know that uh, it was protected while well, traveled all over the net, uh, over the internet. So, uh, anybody, everybody's familiar with DLP. Uh, what I'm referring to here is the need for DLP in, in email. Our products are really smart about detecting sensitive information. It can be customized to your individual needs, your policies, your, uh, your, your secure documents, etc. cetera. Um, and if we find it, we'll encrypt it. DLP is an addition to that where we'll encrypt it and we'll send it off the network. But what happens if the person sending that information shouldn't have access to patient data? Um, so I often refer to it as the folks in the shipping department. You got somebody in there who pisses off his boss and takes somehow or another got access to patient data or customer data, and he or she is going to send it to their Gmail account at home. DLP, you know, without DLP, that message would be encrypted at the desktop, sent to his Gmail, and then you'd have to go to the portal and pick it up. Um, but said, DLP allows you um, or the chief security officer or compliance officer to, to review a message before it gets sent. So the message will be stopped at the DLP, it's quarantined, allows, it gets notifies, let's say the chief security officer, that person can look at the email and then decide at that point if they want to release it or not. And perhaps you have to address this with the employee to find out what's going on. So based on your policies, that might be something that you can consider. <laughs> Um, I'm going to switch gears here a little bit and talk about uh, BYOD, bring your own device and securing that, that aspect of your business. Not to be confused with MDM or mobile device management, um, Zix focuses on BYOD with regards to email. And 
you know, this again, this this uh, the report from Verizon goes into this quite quite in depth. And what we're talking about here is 95% of the instance work, which involved harvest and credentials, um, came from stolen lost devices where somebody took their credentials off of that phone, let's say, and then logged into a web application and was able to go on there and then uh, do something maliciously. So 95% of them involved that. Um, but the amount of data out of the tens of millions here, only 0.03% of devices uh, were ones in fact were truly uh, uh, truly malicious exploits. And so that number is barely recognizable. I mean, you can't really uh, detect anything from it. So this is a quote again from Verizon Belt. So what do you guys do? Um, you remotely wipe devices. I mean, that's what they're saying is the best countermeasure to this. And, and that simply is not, in our minds, the best way of doing it. Because if you left your device in a cab or on a park bench or something like that, and we'll say New York City, an opportunistic criminal is going to pick that up. And what is that criminal going to do? They're not going to harvest the credentials and then um, do the exploits on, on the internet. They're simply going to wipe the device and sell it for 100 bucks. That's what they do. So this whole idea of remote wipe, if you want it done, just wait for the criminal to steal the device. Um, but we're, oops, well, And uh, the, where the malicious piece comes in is where you truly have an information broker that say, you know, you, you guys know about these guys, they'll, they'll steal the device, and before you can wipe it, because employees don't always say right away that I lost my device or it was stolen because they think it's in the laundry somewhere. So it could be, you know, we found as long as two weeks before an employee would say, I've lost my device. So what happens there is somebody will take it the device and they'll either turn off the radio button or they'll put it into what's called a Faraday bag. If anybody's heard of one of those, it's basically a small bag, a lot of cab, uh, cab drivers carry around in, in their car where they can slip a device in there and it protects it from any radio signals getting at it. So then those guys there will take it to a secure place where they'll turn off the radio button and then harvest the credentials and do bad things. And, you know, next thing you know, you're your information is it's on some site. They soon would say over past zero, and then uh, they sell the information online. And there's plenty of sites where you can go and download this information. So what we do and how we approach it, and this next slide we'll talk about it, is um, we we don't put any information on the device itself. All you really have in our product is called Zix One is a viewer to your company email, contacts, and calendar. And we found that most, most organizations, this is what they're looking to protect for most of their uh, employees. An MDM solution, while really good and does a lot of things, not everybody needs an MDM solution. It's really, you know, there are a lot of things that do. So we just look at the email only. And so there, you don't have to worry about wiping any devices or anything getting stolen. We keep all of the information on a mail server, and it's sent over the internet to a secure viewer. It's sent securely. But again, all the information resides on the mail server here, and <coughs> nothing, only the last email that says on the device. And I've got it on my phone, so if anyone wants to see this, it's just like a regular um, you know, email application. It's, you know, or on, on iPhone or on Android, so you can download depending on what your device is. And you know, we're called an app on iPhone, I forget what it is on Android, but you download that and it's a viewer. So all that gets loaded onto that device is the last email that somebody looked at. So if it gets lost or if it gets stolen, that's all the crook is going to see is the last email. And because we're tracking that information, right, as it's going off of our uh, off the mail server we can determine whether or not that email contain any sensitive information and then take actions based upon that. If it's just an email to mom about we're coming home this weekend, who really cares? So with that, I'm going to summarize a little bit about what we do. Um, 
and I'll take any questions. Hopefully, I was able to catch us up a little bit. I'm not sure. Um, I'm certainly, we'll stick around for any questions up here. As much time as I have, and I'm going to be out there the rest of the afternoon. Um, but if you think of Zix, again, we've been around a long time. We've got over 12,000 customers. We're a leader in healthcare, a leader in finance, a leader, quite honestly, in email and encryption across the board. It's, it's what we've been doing for a number of years. Um, we also brought out email data, um, daily uh, data loss prevention for email about well, three years ago because our customers wanted it, so we've developed it. It's an add-on to our email encryption piece. And then if you think about the mobility secure viewer and BYOD protection, that's the Zix One product. So that's all we do. Um, we don't claim to be like many of the, and no offense to the other vendors here, um, you know, you can come to us for everything, all your IT security needs. You know, if you're looking for best of breed and, and recipe, you want to make sure it's secure. Real importantly, you want to make sure it's easy to use because if you, for not only the centers, but the recipients, um, if you're not taking that to advantage, uh, into account, we think that more times than not, you're going to find out that you will eventually because your centers are going to start saying, this is too darn hard, and they're going to try to get around it, or they're going to complain to their manager, who's then going to get you guys in the corner and say, what are you guys doing? I can't even communicate to my patients or my customers. And we hear it all the time. Um, so think about that when you're thinking about email security. Uh, and again, from the recipient standpoint, it needs to be as easy as possible, or um, again, you'll have those people invoking as well. So that's everything I have. If there are any questions, I'd be happy to address those now. And we can even talk about football if you want. <laughs> yes, sir. It sounds like the Patriots would be a good customer. <laughs> <laughs> Best quarterback in the NFL. Huh? The best quarterback in the NFL. Uh -huh. Doesn't have to cheat. Based upon you know. <laughs> some wins or some wins. I don't know how you can say that. Anyhow, I appreciate that. It's a good question. You're right. Um, actually, I remember you used to have a which, um, very large company, and the CEO, who is now in jail, was conversing with his, he was married, he was conversing with his. His girlfriend in ways he probably shouldn't do. Said so that would be a good customer for us. And now the guy's in jail. He's one big CEO. I think pitcher um, just stole a lot of money. And just found out. So, any other questions? Yes, sir. Have you contacted Hillary to see if she needs her help? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I'm in South Dakota, so I think I need to be able to get away with this for the most of the people in this room. But she's not a friend of mine. So. <laughs> uh, I, I am north of Boston, so there's plenty of people there for the doctor. I'm, 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 I'm. Appreciate this question. I'm one way back there. Uh, can you open the attachments on your secure viewer? I'm sorry, can you, attachments? Can you yes, you can. Attachments on your secure viewer? You sure can. It's, it's just like any other email uh, application. You can put attachments on it. Uh, and there's also one thing we did too. That's recently is, and I can show you on my phone. There, um, I almost lost the phone. Uh, I can show you on my phone. There's a way now that with Zix One, you can send a message securely. So we just added that about three months ago. So you can go on, and, uh, you know, your email. You can add an attachment with a simple click of a button. It gets encrypted. So that's another added feature to the technology. So good question. You can open. Any file format that I can think of on, on the six one app. But then when you when you attach that on and it's taken off of the email, then it's out of your protection capability once it's on the device, correct? Yes, um, that's one hundred percent correct. Yeah, it's you know Zix again is about securing email as it transits uh, the internet. Once it's on the device, I mean, that's where perhaps a, an MDM solution would come into play. Or so, so you have the, the ability to view some of it inside your viewer, inside your client, but if you have to try to interact with that attachment at all, then, then it's out. It's outside of your, your surveillance. Okay. That's correct. Yeah, again, if, if it's on the network or something like that, um, once, it's, once we've done our job 
it, it's really up to other security policies and products to <coughs> secure that information. That's a good question. We have that a lot. Yes, sir. When you're sending from your desktop, since I know you can choose between manually encrypting, having it automatically encrypted, or not encrypting, can you do the same thing in 6 months for your whole group? Uh, you can. Yeah, so um, with 6.1, and it's when you first install it, it's just sending information in the clear and receiving. It receives information, I shouldn't say that, it'll, it'll be communicating back to the mail server over, over a uh, connection, so now TLS connection. So it's a secure connection there. Um, and with the, with the application now, you can send it unencrypted over that secure tunnel, or you can encrypt it. So you do have, you're right with the ZIX gateway, I mean it's right there on, on the, uh, the toolbar line is how to encrypt if you want to just bypass all the policy and say I know this is sensitive, I'm going to encrypt it and enforce encryption. Or you can say, you know, I know I'm just sending this recipe to my mom and I know it's not sensitive information and maybe it came a word or two that could be deemed sensitive. So let me just make sure it goes off and clear, and then you can say, you know, send unencrypted. And all that stuff is logged, too. So as a network administrator, or CISO, or security compliance officer, um, you can watch all that activity. And you see people, if you want to set up reports, say, you know, let me know who's sending unencrypted messages on purpose. You can do that. Yes, sir. You guys get into, uh, you know, like the uh, public-private key implementation, CA, the non-repediation, digital signing, those kinds of things? Uh, we don't. Um, so from a PKI perspective, we take that all off of, we do that all at our data center. Um, we're a hybrid solution where some of the stuff resides on your network or on your phone. <coughs> the bulk of it is managed at our data center in Dallas, and there's SysTrust, 2 and 3, SAS 7, PCI, and we work where we all have all kinds of compliance base there. But uh, the PKI infrastructure was part of the problem, we think. That, that that was a difficult thing to do. And maybe if you and I are communicating, not too hard, but if me and the rest of the room is doing it, it's really difficult. So, um, And we don't get into digital signing or any of that other remediation you know, you mentioned. It's, it's, again, it's, if you think about ZIX, it's about security and out in the transit. Good question, thanks. Excellent. Well, again, I want to thank you all for coming out um, in this weather uh, from the Northeast, so this is nothing. But anyhow, I do appreciate you coming out. I want to thank Earthman again for inviting me out, and uh, thank you all very much. I'll be out here for the rest of the day. So I'll